Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. God in his kingdom. Moved by the spirit, one who lives in love lives in God. And God lives in him. What a wonderful thing is our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Thank you, Ray. Well, we're going to have odds and ends tonight. How's that? Um, the Feast of the Transfiguration. I think we need to look at that feast in a way I want you to read a little bit what comes ahead of it and what followed it because our faith, our faith is something that is weak today. We need to look at the scriptures and find out, find out what did the apostles believe? Was their faith greater than ours? We're going to find out something tonight, I think, that you may be surprised. You know, our Lord said, uh, just before the transfiguration, he said to them, he made it clear that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously. And that he would be put to death and rise on the third day. But you know what Peter said? I don't like to pick on him, you know. I mean, I'm going to live with that man for all eternity. You know what I mean? I hate to pick on him. But he's a wonderful man to give you courage. Peter said, heaven preserve you, Lord. This must not happen to you. And the Lord turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path because the way you think is not God's way, but the way of man. Ooh. Now, did you ever think that way, huh? Yeah, we all do. We are not a group of people for suffering. We like the weather, the right temperature. Today I went out to see the dish, one of them. And it was a perfectly beautiful day. And I thought, oh Lord, it's a beautiful day. I should not have opened my mouth. <laughs> Out of nowhere came rain and hail. I thought, what happened, Lord? I was soaked. And everybody with me soaked. One of the engineers hid under one of the dishes. <laughs> but there we were. Now, there's two things you could do get really upset or enjoy being soaking wet. <laughs> One of the two. You can figure out why it happened because five minutes before it was a beautiful day. 
And I wondered if the Lord looked down and said, a good dowsing would do her good. <laughs> so I came up and I sat in my chair. Oh, it was wet. Now that's a little thing, just a little thing. Like we don't enjoy that. It's not in our nature. And I understand Peter, you know. He loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. Many of you have mothers, fathers, children that have been ill for years, for years. And we all say at some time when Peter said, Lord, this must not happen to you. Or, or why, Lord, does this happen? And, and, and we need to be careful, you see. We, we, the Lord doesn't ask us to understand. He asks us to accept, to accept. And sometimes illness, especially in children, is so, seems sometimes so unfair, doesn't it? Huh? And, and even there, we do all we can to make those that are ill comfortable painless, whatever. Be careful of the world today. The world makes you think that this is not necessary, you shouldn't have this. That's where this assisted suicide and euthanasia comes in. You see, total neglect and, and total unacceptance of the way God treats us all. As we get older and more creaky, you know, my mother used to say, I used to get up from a chair like that, see, and my mother looked at me and she said to me one day, just wait till you get up in your years. You'll have to have two or three tries before you get out. <laughs> and I said, oh, come on. Well, I met the place where I got to have at least two tries before I get up. And see, we don't even understand that because the soul is as new and fresh and young as it was when the Lord put it in your little body. So our soul is always young. The old body doesn't match anymore, you know. It's gotten taller or shorter or fatter or skinnier. Did you ever look at a picture of yourself 20 years ago? <laughs> you wonder where all that hair went? <laughs> you never noticed it going. One day you looked in the mirror and there was a spot you never saw before. <laughs> now you can put a wig on. Everybody knows because it don't look like real hair, you see? <laughs> now some of you men, let me give you a tip. <laughs> if you're going to wear a wig, be sure your sideburns match. <laughs> Because they're going to tell right off the bat. <laughs> I met a man with the, I hate to say this, it, I almost died, but I, I couldn't laugh because it was such a shock. See, I was talking to him, and all of a sudden I looked up, and his whole head had come down to here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going up, and I went... <clears throat> He said, what's the matter? I said, <laughs> And you know, he left, he never knew. I hope the wind pushed it back, you know. <laughs> but those, you know, those, even those kind of things. And I said, I, I, I prayed, I said, Lord, I hope the wind pushes it back before he looks in the mirror. You know, you'll be so embarrassed. And those are little, little things.
tiny things that happen to us all day long. And then when big things come along, tragedies. The poor people in that terrible TWA accident. Those kind of things we don't understand any more than Peter did, which must not happen to you. But you see, the Lord has... See, Peter's the first thing he said wrong, heaven preserve you, Lord. But if heaven had preserved Jesus, none of us would be redeemed. And see, none of us know that without this pain, this illness, and I believe in doctors and nurses and medicine and everything you can get to help yourself. But the ordinary trials of life doesn't have to be something that's physical. We, we have to watch it. We don't say, oh, that would preserve me because my degree of glory in the kingdom depends on that willful adherence to either the ordaining will of God or the permitting will of God. Let's see what happens here. The Lord is going to give them a teaching now, you see. We all need this teaching today because we're not followers of Jesus. We're not followers of the cross. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, you want to follow Jesus, then he must renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. He, he is our leader, you see. The leader of this network is Jesus. It's not me, it's not Bill, it's not the vice president. It's, it's all of us as a family and, and Jesus is our leader, you see. And because if anyone wants to save his life, he has to lose it. Now, what does that mean? Well, all of us have different temperaments, different likes, different dislikes. Uh, and some things are hard for some and not hard at all for others. You know? Some things are very difficult. And somebody will go through that like nothing. Almost makes you mad, you know? Because you didn't take it too hot. That's because we're all different. And because of that, each one of us is going to have a different mansion in his kingdom. Oh, wow. And Jesus said, if it were not true, I would have told you. And that's three. He knew we'd have a hard time with it. I'm going to have a mansion. You're going to have a mansion. One of the sisters said to me last week, Mother, I, will you visit me in my mansion? I said, oh, sure. <laughs> and you can come and live in mine if you want to. <laughs> because it, the Lord said a mansion. Now I know all you liberals are jumping up and down out there. <laughs> Well, just jump, because <laughs> that's the way it is. The Lord said, I, I go, he said, and I prepare. How is he going to prepare a place? I got to love everybody in heaven, and everybody has to love me. Now, you're looking at me and say, well, that's not hard, Mother. Well, you don't live with me, you see. There's a difference. <laughs> But we're going to have that kind of heart and mind and soul that we are really and truly going to love everybody. I know you're thinking of somebody you hate right now. Mm, somebody did you in? Even that person, if he gets to heaven, you're going to love. It's going to be totally different. I firmly believe that my dear mother saw my father before she died, twice. And there was no love lost, believe me. 
And I prayed, I prayed that she would forgive my father before she died. And one day she looked towards the door. I've told some of you this before. And I knew it was my father because she said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, ooh, oh, oh. <sighs> and then a few hours before she died, she looked at that same door. And she said, Oh, you're so beautiful. I thought, wow. She began to forgive and began to love. You see. Began to forgive and began to love. And so in heaven, it's going to be so awesome and so beautiful. And there we will appreciate all the pain and all the suffering that we wish had never had, but then we'll know, we'll know for sure what it meant. Well, I'm going to have to take a break for some reason. I think there's some more people coming in. Don't go away. We're going to tell you the rest of it in just a minute. Our little incident here reminded me of something that happened to me in an airplane. During the program, we had kind of a loud sound, and, and we thought it was my hearing aid, you know. But anyway, I was in a plane going to Europe, and they had these the worst movies you could possibly pick. Here you are over the ocean, your life is in God's hands. <laughs> If you went down, there's no way of going to confession or even, even saying, God help me, because you're probably so scared. And they put the worst, the very worst movies on. So I looked at the title and the, a few of the little things. I thought, oh, Lord, can't you do something with this thing, you know? Not the plain Lord, just the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and so... I went and put my blinders on, you know, so I could sleep. And somehow my hearing aid got on real high. And the movie went <laughs> I looked at black. There was nothing there. I mean, out. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. So I took off my blinders and went to sleep. So the next, in the morning, I suppose morning is about five hours after that. And the stewardess came up to me and she said, uh, were you watching the movie? I said, no, those are the crummiest movies you could possibly put on. She said, well, we don't know what happened. I said, oh, you don't? <laughs> and she said, She says, no, she said, it, it just went off, like, black, off. I said, well, I think I did it. <laughs> she said, you did it? I said, I think so. I said, I, I put my hearing up real high, and it went. <laughs> she said, you're kidding. I said, no. So she goes and tells the captain. <laughs> By that time, I felt about this big, you know. I thought you were going to make an announcement on the, <laughs> on the microphone. And he looked at me and he said, are you the one that shut off the movie? I said, yes, and I'm glad I did it. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't think they're too hot either. <laughs> so I thought, well, I know how to turn them off now. <laughs> So if you have a crummy movie on a, movie, on a plane, turn it off with your hairy gate. 
anyway, so Jesus tells us that we have to, we have to be like him. See, if I am patient, I am like Jesus. I'm not like Angelica. <laughs> If I'm compassionate, I'm like Jesus. I'm not like Angelica. If I trust in his providence, I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm not going to be like Angelica. And that's what he means. Well, now, he said the Son of Man is going to come in glory, in the glory of his Father with his angels. I wish he'd come tomorrow. Can't you imagine the Lord coming with the Father and all the angels? And what's he going to do? He said when he does, he will reward each one according to his behavior. Hmm. Some of you need to go to confess. Because if the Lord judged you now by your behavior, you might not make it. And when I say that, I'm not being negative. I'm being very loving. Because I want you in heaven. Well, after all of that, it said six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John up a high mountain that we call Tabor. And he said in their presence, he was transfigured. And his face shone like the sun. You would just look at the sun. And it said here, his clothes were white as light. Now that light in here is very white and very bright. That's how his clothes were. Can you imagine these men? I mean, they've been eating with Jesus and, and walking with them and sleeping on the same ground and worshiping and praying with him. And all of a sudden, he's totally changed. Totally changed. Well, and then all of a sudden, Moses and Elijah come. And they're talking to Jesus just like I'm talking to you. Wouldn't that scare you to death, huh? Not Peter. Peter said, Lord, yet wonderful to be here. If you wish, I'll make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elisha. Now, why in the world would he ever say that? Because all of us, when we have those moments of joy and happiness, we never want it to end, do we, huh? people that come here and they go back home, inevitably so many will write and say, Mother, I thought it was in heaven. Then I came home. <laughs> well, home with all its trials, with all its heartaches, is that preparation for heaven. You have to understand that. Now, he was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them in shadow. Oh, that happened to our lady. Do you remember? When she said, be it done to me according to thy will, it said, the spirit covered her in shadow. Wow. And they heard a voice. It said, this is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. If I was asked to say in one word or two what I would want the people to know or to hear and what was important today, I would say that. Listen to him. Do you listen to Jesus? I just read something in a paper about a, a, a group of Christian ministers 
decided that the Holy Father was a detriment to unity. <sighs> well, my friend, I got news for you. He is the source of unity. You have to be united to him. Because he is the vicar of Christ. And you must understand that and you must know that. And then the cloud there, after that voice, when they heard this, they fell on their faces, scared, overcome with fear. You know that happened to my mother? The woman that, where I was healed many years ago was called Mrs. White, and the Lord would appear to her every 28th of June, once a year. And when he would come, the entire house, little bitty, kind of a shotgun house, you know, you come in the front, you could see the back door. And that place became all kinds of colors. The light was a, with a small little old 50 watt bulb in the room and all of a sudden there was gorgeous colors that you never saw before. Gold and silver and rainbow colors and everybody would know the Lord was there. And immediately, it was, it was an awesome thing to see. Everybody was down on their knees with their face on the ground. They knew they were in the presence of God. How do you like that, huh? And this is exactly what the apostles did. They fell on their faces, overcome with fear. And Jesus came up and touched them. He said, stand up, do not be afraid. And they raised their eyes. And the, the next few words I want to imprint upon your mind and heart. <laughs> They raised their eyes and they saw no one but Jesus. You know, when I was a young sister, I used to try and make up all kind of pious schemes to keep my mind on the right track, you know. And if you're not Italian, you don't realize how difficult that might be because Italian minds don't stay on the same track very long. <laughs> and I remember for a long time, for months, I used to repeat this one little sentence. And looking up, they saw no one but Jesus. If we would all do that, when you're ready to go somewhere and the sun is shining and it pours, see Jesus. When things are difficult for you in any way, look up and see Jesus. When you have your aches and your pains, and we all do, see Jesus. In all circumstances, look up and see Jesus. If you and I did that, in a year's time, we would be all saints. Why? Because everything would look much different than it does now. Well, I go on, but we have a call. Hello? Uh, Mother Joka. Yes, Good where, are you, where are you from? I'm from Missouri. This is Vincent. What is your question? Well, I got a request from my daughter. Mm -hmm. She's 11 years old, going to be 12. And she wants to ask you a question. How can you, she get some literature on your religious order? Because she wants to be a nun someday. Ha, and she wonderful. talks about all the time. <laughs> she talks about you and how wonderful you are. Well, thank you. Well, you just write to me here at the network. Put on the letter vocation. And then it'll take a different turn. 
<laughs> if you want to be a nun, that's what you want to be. A lot of my sisters, one of them wanted to be a nun since she was three. I thought, three, wow. But some guys, God inspires many children at a very young age. So what you need to do is to pray, uh, give yourself to Jesus now. Be loving, kind to your neighbor, thoughtful. Think of others before yourself, obedient to your parents. And God will slowly begin to show you how to give all to Jesus. But you can read the scriptures, read the lives of the saints. They're so interesting and so encouraging. So I would do all of that. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? Uh, my name is Gerald Rieger. I'm from uh, New Ulm, Minnesota. Uh, July 2nd, my 21-year-old daughter was killed in a car train accident. Uh, I'm sorry. And, Mother, uh, uh, my wife and myself, too, just have a few questions uh, to get us through this. Mm -hmm. uh, one would be like, did God cause this? And number two, how can he be loving? And number three, if he did not cause this, why didn't he protect her and, and, and her baby from harm? Because she was, she was also nine months pregnant too. Okay. That is a mystery. It is difficult, very difficult. God did not, did not cause it, no. I don't know what happened, if someone hit her or she, was, she hit someone else or she slid, whatever it was. The train accident, that's even worse. Whatever happened, it could be caused by, perhaps she slid in front of the train. We don't know. But it did happen. And your next question follows. Why did God allow it? In other words, why did God permit it? We have to understand that God sees everything. He saw before time began when your daughter would be born, conceived, born, lived. He knew all of that. For a reason we don't understand here. There's where our faith has to hold us up, hold us up. Whatever reason God allowed this to happen. We must bow to his infinite permitting will and know it was for the good of your daughter and her baby. And, and we, we rebel against that because Peter said the same thing. He said, look, don't go. You don't go if you're going to be murdered, if you're going to be, if you're going to suffer so much, don't go. Let's look at how things are now, okay? Her baby is with her in the kingdom. That baby never saw pain, never felt pain, never saw a jealous look never saw an angry look or heard an angry voice, suddenly was conceived and then saw the face of God oh. and had total happiness, unbelievable joy. Your daughter Maybe taken out of her time. Maybe her time was when she was 80. 
had this accident not happened. But God in his infinite love and mercy is so generous, so generous, that he would give her greater glory, greater love, greater compassion, greater everything in the kingdom because she was deprived of the rest of her life. And so now she has greater glory than she would have ever had. She has a joy that you and I cannot even imagine. And our faith has to bow before the Lord because he knows. When you die, you and your wife, you will see her and all that glory. And then at that moment, you will know why. But then it won't matter. And that's how you and I have to be a witness to the world, that we can accept this tragedy with faith, with faith. That's when our faith grows in the time of tragedy and, and heartache, and disappointment, and, and the unknowing, the unknowing. That's when your faith is at its best. It doesn't take away the pain or the grief of missing her, or even the wonder why. It only says, God, I trust you. And we'll say a prayer for you. I know you are already handling it well. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? From Michigan. And what is your question? I have was wondering if, first of all, I believe in miracles now that I finally got through to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, have you ever heard of anybody outside of the Catholic faith that has had an apparition of the Blessed Mother? I think so. I think so. Um, I can't remember the occasion that this woman told me about. Um, in fact, I think she had a hard time with Our Lady. You know, she just thought we worshipped her, and all. you know, she had the typical hard time with the Mother of God. I can't understand that, but she did. And one time, if I remember correctly, it's been many years, she told me that she was just in her living room, and she just sitting there griping about Our Lady. And she said, all of a sudden, there was before her the most beautiful woman she ever saw. And she smiled at her. And that smile took away all of her fears, her anger, uh, almost jealous, I guess, uh, all her doubts. And she began to take instructions because she knew she knew, see? So I don't know how often it is, but Our Lady is generous. She wants all of her children to get to heaven. And I, she's appearing so many places today, you know, that I know something just around the corner. We have another call, hello? Hello, Mother. Hey, where are you from? I'm from Rhode Island. And what is your question? I have a couple, Mother, dear Mother. Uh, last year and the year before, I lost a young son, so I can uh, uh, go along with the man that just called. Just be faithful, pray to the mother, he'll get the relief he needs. But right now, Mother, we just buried another young brother, 59 years old, another sudden death. Hmm. It breaks our heart because we were a family of 12, now we're down to six all sudden deaths. Now my sister just called me, dear mother. She has a husband in a nursing home who's 80 years old with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. She was really crying tonight because he's failing so fast. 
And you know, sometimes it makes her wonder why she lost her brother so full of life and her husband who was 80. Mother, I told her to turn your program on because you've always lifted my spirits. I told her to listen to you because I knew you would say a prayer for her because we don't know why. Only God knows why. So please give her a special blessing and give him in the nursing home one too, Mother. Yeah. Well, I think it's natural for people when you have someone young or middle-aged die and then you see somebody way up there or way down there, I don't know which way it is, that uh, you say, well, they're, they're old. But see, that, we're thinking the thoughts of man. See? Mm -hmm. All of us have a, a certain degree of glory in heaven been destined for us from all eternity. I personally feel that, and every day I ask the Lord to let me live a long life. Why? Well, I'm not going to be too peppy after a certain amount of time. But a long life is a blessing, a big blessing. Why? Well, it's a blessing because every minute, Every minute that you're alive, you have the opportunity to change, to learn more about God, to get a higher degree of glory in His kingdom, to know Him better in heaven, to learn more about Him in heaven, to be happier, to understand more in heaven. It's a blessing, a blessing. And so we, we don't know a person's soul. A person may be working on their purgatory here. That's why suicide is so bad. And this so-called assisted suicide. Suicide is suicide. You, you cannot determine your birth and you cannot determine your day of death. And now we do both. See? And we can't do that. This is the prerogative of God. And, and if, I, if living longer will make me closer to God, I want to live longer. So you say, well then, why is my brother in his 50s? Why did he go suddenly? Maybe that was the best time for him to go. Maybe that was the greatest, the moment he would have the greatest glory in the kingdom. How wonderful. How wonderful. And there, my friends, we have to trust. We can imitate Peter in a lot of things. We shouldn't in something. Because he said, you know, why do you want to do this? We would give the Lord great honor and glory if we could say, Lord, I don't know why. I don't understand but I trust you. Oh, he's so happy when you say that. You can trust the Lord. Whenever he calls, whatever time he calls, whoever he calls, you can trust. You can't trust doctors who go around assisting you to end your own life. I wouldn't trust them at all. I want to say a prayer, we only have two minutes, that our dear Lord will bless all of you out there. Lord, just bless everyone, Lord. Let your hand fall upon them and give them that peace that only you can give and that joy in your holy will. That we all know, Lord, that we can rest in your will. We can trust your will. And we ask our sweet mother to comfort them, for she stood beneath the cross. She knew why her son died. 
and she suffered with him. Let us suffer with our loved ones and say to him as she said to him, Thy will be done. And we say every day, well, we're about ready to go. I've enjoyed being with you. Remember, please, you write to me. This network that belongs to you is doing great things everywhere. And when you get to heaven, you're not only going to know the whys of all the problems in your life, you're going to see thousands and millions of people running after you and saying, thank you. I'm here because of you. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you are. Remember, in our lives, trust Jesus. He loves you beyond any words you could express. And he wants you to be with him forever. So remember, put us between your gas and electric bill. We need you, and God needs you to give his message around the world. Bye now. <laughs>